talking about Thomas Hardy for my author project. Thomas Hardy was born June 2nd, 1840, in Hyrebach Hampton in Dorset County, England. Later, during Hardy's writing career, he set his novels in a place that he called Wessex, which was inspired by his childhood hometown. Hardy first employed the term Wessex in his novel called Far From the Maddening Crowd. He created specific boundaries for Wessex. Many of the towns that appeared in Hardy's novels were pseudonyms for real towns that existed in the six counties that Wessex enclosed. The explanation lies partly in his feeling that he was freer to make fictional changes in a real-life scene if he gave it a fictional name. The other reason for Hardy's play with names is that not infrequently it was tactful to disguise the setting of a story in order to avoid giving offense. We come across this first in A Pair of Blue Eyes, in which, to conceal the relationship of his narrative to his courtship, he transforms St. Juliet into West Endelstow, thus affording himself the opportunity of doubly disguising it by transplanting it near to the coast. Hardy was the first of four children. He was born small and thought at birth to be dead. His father was a master mason and a small builder, and his mother was of peasant background. His mother, Gemina, instilled a love of books in Hardy, and he was able to read before he started school. Hardy's father, whose name was also Thomas, taught Hardy how to play the violin at age four. He later traveled around the countryside playing his violin at dances. Doing this, he became familiar with all the ways of rural life that made up many of his later literary works. Hardy is known for his keen descriptive eye for nature and the jobs and customs of rural life. It is said that he has an imaginative sympathy and a consciousness of the close relationship of man and the natural world amidst the moves of which he is a part. In 1848 and 1849, Hardy attended a village school in Lower Bockhampton for a year, and then he changed to a school at Dorchester. At the age of 16, Hardy helped his father with the architectural drawings for a restoration of Woodsford Castle. The owner of Woodsford Castle, John Hicks, was impressed by the younger Hardy's work and took him on as an apprentice in 1856. Hardy conducted surveys and excelled as a draughtsman. Working for Hicks until 1862, when he left for London to work with the architect Arthur Bloomfield. At this time, he also began writing poetry after he was impressed by Reverend William Barnes, a local poet and mentor of Hardy's. In 1865, Hardy published his first short story called How I Built Myself a House, which appeared in Chambers' Journal. This short story contains a mix of fiction and his knowledge of architecture. In 1868, Hardy wrote his first, but never published, novel called The Poor Man and the Lady. Hardy himself later described the story as an incoherent production full of revolutionary and antisocial theories. In 1870, Hardy went to plan a church restoration in St. Juliet in Cornwall. While working there, he met Emma Lavinia Gifford, who lived from 1840 to 1912. She was the sister-in-law of the vicar of St. Juliet. She encouraged him in his writing, and they married in London in 1874 and would have no children. Around this time, Hardy wasn't sure whether to pursue architecture or literature as his main career. Before he felt confident of choosing a literary profession, he had to make sure it paid well, as well, or better than architecture. In 1871, Hardy anonymously published his first novel, called Desperate Remedies. The book was unsuccessful. However, in it, we see a theme that appears in many of his later novels. That theme being sensual selfishness against self-sacrificing devotion matched in a struggle for the possession of a loved woman. In 1872, Hardy tried again to publish another novel and anonymously published Under the Greenwood Tree, which, to Hardy's delight, was a success. Under the Greenwood Tree was described as an intimate, detailed, humorous, and delicately ironical story of a rural courtship. 
1873, Hardy published A Pair of Blue Eyes, which was the first novel to have his name on the title page. It was also the first novel to be in serial form in Tinsley's magazine before the publication as a book. The heroine, Elfrida, in A Pair of Blue Eyes, is modeled after Hardy's future wife, Emma Lavinia Gifford. The hero, Stephen Smith, is an architect like Hardy. However, it is thought that the hero was modeled after a friend of Hardy's. The book is a mirror of Hardy and Emma's courtship. Although A Pair of Blue Eyes is regarded by admirers, critics, and Hardy himself as an immature work, we see in it examples of a writing technique that Hardy was very fond of. This being the use of repeated coincidences. In A Pair of Blue Eyes, these coincidences were significant for Hardy's development and philosophy. Some notable uses of coincidence where Hardy stretches the susceptibility of the reader are the following. When Mr. Swancourt chooses the same day for his secret marriage that his daughter chose for hers, when the one person who Elfreda and Smith met on their return from London was the old lady whose hatred of Elfreda made the meeting more unfortunate. When Knight, the person who made friends with Smith, was the reviewer of Elfreda's romance and the second Mrs. Swancourt's cousin. When Elfreda found her missing earring, which she had looked for earlier in vain, at the most awkward moment possible, when a church tower fell right after Elfreda had said that it was the very symbol of steadfastness, when Mrs. Jethway, Elfreda's foe, was buried underneath the fallen church tower, and finally when Knight and Smith independently returned to Devonshire on the same train that carried the body of their love. Another literary theme that we see throughout Hardy's novels that comes in varied forms is the look. The eyes of the loved one are his most dazzling and fascinating part, the visible aspect of him closest to his secret consciousness and most exposing that secret to the lover's look. The title, A Pair of Blue Eyes, which refers to the heroine Elfreda's eyes, is an example of how important the eyes were to Hardy in his writing. In A Pair of Blue Eyes, when reading about Elfreda's eyes, it says that in them was seen a sublimation of all of her. It was not necessary to look further. There she lived. These eyes were blue, blue as autumn distance, blue as the blue we see between the retreating moldings of hills and the woody slopes on a sunny September morning. A misty and shady blue that no beginning or surface and was looked into rather than at. Hardy first employs the look in the scene where Alfreda meets Smith. She is coming down to greet her father's guest and is surprised by the guest's appearance, which was quite the opposite of what she had envisioned from her father's letters. In return, Smith is equally surprised at her appearance and beauty. Later, when Smith is watching Alfreda sing in the candlelight, she enraptures him. The narrator says that, Every woman who makes a permanent impression on a man is usually recalled to his mind's eye as she appeared in one particular scene, which seems ordained to be her special form of manifestation throughout the pages of his memory. Again we see the look when the knight is holding Elfreda to assist her in gazing into the river at her reflection to see the earrings that she is wearing that the knight had just given her. Admiring her reflection, she is also aware that the knight is admiring it too. This gives the look a double meaning, because not only is Alfreda looking at herself, she is also looking at herself through the knight's eyes. In 1874, Hardy's Far From the Manning Crowd was published anonymously in serial form in the magazine called Cornhill. When published as a book, Hardy's name was on the title page. The success of A Pair of Blue Eyes and Far From the Manning Crowd was enough that Hardy abandoned architecture for a wholly committed career in literature. In 1885, Hardy designed and built his small house called Max Gate in Dorchester. It is now a museum owned by the National Trust. Hardy wrote many of his enduring novels while living at Max Gate. Hardy published Tess of the Durbervilles in 1891. Tess is the most widely read of all Hardy's books. We again see the look in Tess of the Durbervilles when Tess sees her future lover, Angel Clare, for the first time at a country dance. They both see each other and are aware of the attraction that passed, but do not meet that night. 